So I just recently picked up this power supply tester from eBay. Just a cheap little unit, just for testing your um, PC power supplies and whatnot. So I thought we'd have a look inside and see how the thing works. Do a bit of a product and performance review. We'll um, hook it up to a PC power supply, take some readings and see how accurate it is compared to uh, my Fluke multimeter. So I've already cracked this thing open. It's, it's glued shut along the sides. But I, with a bit of a twist and a bit of a persuasion, I've managed to... Um, get it open so we'll get rid of the uh, the case and that's basically what we got I'll just zoom in and we'll um, see what we can find see what interesting little things so basically we've got our Molex connectors the SATA connector here it looks like it's just been um, designed into the PCB it's uh, an FR4 PCB down here it says model SD LC panel revision 2.3 date there is 16th of the 9th 2015 so we've got a buzzer a few LEDs which correspond to 12 volt 3.3 volt and 5 volt that'll just tell us if we got those voltages they'll light up um, maybe some current sensing resistors or load resistors even some a transistor and some other little discrete components over here which I would say is going to be used to switch the uh, power supply on, you know, that green wire and the ground wire. That's probably either it's got a jumper or there's a like a little bit of a switching. And then um, the, the actual drive chips or the, the brains of this thing is actually sitting underneath the LCD panel here. This little white bit, there's an LED inside there that's giving the backlight to the LCD panel. Um, you can just see there the two legs there. So to see actually what is uh, driving this thing and doing the smarts we're going to have to take this out so what I'll do is in a sec I'll just desolder that and we can lift it up and see what's underneath but the solder job actually looks pretty good the um, large plugs here they've been uh, they've been hand soldered in you can see maybe you can see there's some uh, some flux there and also the screen looks like it may have been uh, hand soldered too but it's looking like a, it's a half decent board it's, I mean it's a pretty simple thing to make so it's going to be pretty cheap but it's it's looking reasonably decent so I'll take this screen out and then we can have a look and see what's underneath alright so I've got this thing to soldered and we'll pull the uh, screen off so the LC panel comes off by itself and then underneath we've got the backlight so the way this backlight works, if I can, oh, I don't know if I can peel that off easily, but there's a, there's an LED in here that's shining this way, and then it's got some, uh, like the white plastic and a few little bits and pieces to shine evenly up through, kind of like the backlight on it, any kind of LCD screen on your laptop. So put that aside, and then there's our two chips. Now, oh, I'll turn it around. And I'll zoom in, but this is the chip that we're interested in. This is the main control chip. But there's no markings. It looks like not even that it was rubbed off. It was just never printed on there to start with. This one here, I'll, I'll zoom in, I'll zoom in. But that's our, that one there is our, that's as far as we can go. So this one here is our LCD driver. It's a Holtec HT1621B. And that's a, uh, a RAM mapping 32x4 LC controller for IOMCU, so for a, a microcontroller. That's interfaces between the microcontroller and the LC screen. That does all the driving of the LCD. But the controller, there's no way to tell what that is, which is really unfortunate. Um, I can't even see, like sometimes when they rub the markings off or they... Um, take the markings off. You can sometimes see a little bit of a shadow of the the old marking, but this I don't think they've even printed that on to start with. But that's what that is. That'll be a microcontroller, which is uh, using that yeah you know, some sort of internal A to D converter to uh, see what um, input voltages we're getting and that sort of thing. And then that's just outputting its information to this chip, which is then displaying on the LCD. So that's all there is really for that because we can't see what that one is 
but it does look like a well made product the soldering is nice and clean even under there so I'll put the LC back on fire it up and we'll see how accurate this thing is alright so we'll power this thing up and see what happens I've got this power supply here um, I've got a dangerous prototypes uh, breakout board on the front so that's what I'm connecting through to here first we'll plug it straight into the power supply through this plug here and um, see what it says I do have some modifications so it's going to give us an error but we'll see if that actually does error if it does that's good that's what we want because it'll tell us that there's a, a rail missing which I've, I've done that myself um, then what we'll do is we'll plug our power supply into the dangerous prototypes breakout board and then we'll feed the power straight into the uh, SATA connector here and um, we'll see if the LEDs here light up um, I'm using the SATA input because that includes a 3.3 volts the Molex and the um, GPU plugs don't I think the GPU plugs might only have 12 volts but these ones have 12 and 5 but this one has the 3.3 as well so that will give us the full range alright so let's plug this in and see what happens Yep, so that's given us an error because uh, it's missing the 12 volt second rail but that's normal, that's because I've modified this so that's good, it's giving us an error when we expect an error now it's taken 190 milliseconds to turn the power supply on at 3.3 volts we've got 3.3 12 volts we've got 12 5 volts SB we've got 5 at the 5 volt rail we've got 5 and 12 volts negative we've got 11.8 so I'll get my fluke and we'll do a few tests and see what the actual readings are so this one we've got 5.12 volts and we're reading 5 volts that's pretty close over here we've got 3.4 volts and we're reading 3.3 oh, my fluke just turned off so that's pretty close as well. Um, over here we've got negative 12 and we're reading 11.8. Eh, close enough. And then down here we're reading 12.15 and we've got 12. So they're all pretty close. They're pretty much ballpark figures. So that's about as close as I would expect for a, um, an uncalibrated device like this. Alright, so I'm going to then unplug it from here and we'll plug it into our breakout board so we can feed the voltages directly into our SATA connector input. I'll make sure we've got no shorts there. That looks alright. So if I plug that into here, and there we go, we'll get our three LEDs light up. So it seems like we don't actually get the display when we're not using this input here but we get the LEDs so if I put the cover on that's telling us that we've got 12 volts 3.3 volts and 5 volts coming in here so that's working correctly as well so it all seems to work pretty good basically the way these LEDs work is they just got a, uh, a dropper resistor and they're connected directly to these inputs so the 3.3 volts um, which is the white wire here that just comes straight to the LED through a resistor and then that goes to ground which is the black one same with the uh, the 12 volts and the 5 volts here they go through dropper resistors just here and to the LED so it's a real basic thing it's basically just an LED straight across the inputs and if we did the same down here and over here we'll get the corresponding LEDs lighting up for the voltages that we connect so that looks pretty straightforward it seems to be relatively accurate and um, a somewhat well made product so once again we're going to give it a thumbs up if you need a cheap power supply tester this looks like it will do the job this won't test load though that's the only thing this one doesn't do it won't test the uh, the load that this that the power supply can kick out it's just for voltages but if that's all you need it's a good product alright we'll see you next time